I'm not a, uh, a politician and I'm not a civil servant. I'm a clinical psychologist and background. Then quickly, then, we're a small country. Um, policy, we have policy to increase access, but we recognise that isn't enough. We developed our policy and implementation strategy in partnership with stakeholders, including users and carers. We focus services on effectiveness and efficiency. Um, we've raised the profile of psychological interventions with chief executives who have the money. And so therefore, and um, see, computerized CBT is efficient, it's cost effective, it's evidence based, it's an intervention that will help boards to meet their psychological therapies access target so boards to grab it. I have no idea where I'm going. I have no idea where I'm going to end up. And I just hope to God I don't crash. The question that we don't know is what are the limits to self-care? It promises tremendous opportunities in therapeutic interventions, such as fasting. It promises tremendous opportunities in provider training. And one of the largest challenges that we have in the healthcare workforce is that the vast majority of healthcare providers today, even in high income countries, do not have the competencies to deliver effective mental health care environment. There are huge limits to the improvement of this model as an internal model. You can only improve efficiency so much if you're doing a one-to-one -one model. This is cru crucial. You don't need to show what you're doing is better you need to show that it is as good in the outcome. It's a very different design. If you can show that you can deliver this at any time, the politician will love it. Well, the interesting thing is when we look critically at the e-health data landscape, there are some disorders for which we are pretty good at. And then there are some disorders for which we have a lot of noise and a very good signal. Diabetes is good there. Mental health? No. A lot of noise. And if you're... But it's safe. There is a really, really interesting paper from Australia, which is a leader in all of this work, which shows that teenagers, teenagers prefer face-to-face -face contact over electronic contact for psychological treatment. Ooh. Politicians aren't interested in cost effectiveness. They're interested in cost savings. Every step in the component parts of the pathways, people are integrating the knowledge into what they're doing. That's really important. So how, what are some tools that you can use? Number one, do not invite politicians to your meetings. What if you could suggest to governments that people who have depression and an illness and a disability that requires a functional aid. There's two categories of people that are really important. One is a category of champions. Within any political system, there are politicians who will be champions for a cause. They're the people that should be at the meetings. The champions in those sectors the champions in the political sector, the champions in the bureaucracy, and the champions in civil society. You invite them. Here is a suggestion that you might want to think about. One simple component that governments can do in partnership with presidents, don't implement things that cause harm. If you can show that this doesn't cause harm, that's the number one intervention concerning government. Number two, take things we know work, Works. Remember, this is a non inferiority trial. Be transparent, including what's your return on investment. And if you can do a public private partnership model, the return on investment for government is going to be good. Remember, there's the cost saving. Here we go. Firstly, 
if we look at the geography of the Dark Water European region, just to kind of set the perspective of, of the recommendations that we have for the project. In terms of e mental health, um, for much of European in this picture that you saw here, it's actually not a ratio of one to one. Receiving mental health treatment is zero. And it governs whatever we do, but it also is what we try to mirror at the country level as well. And linked to that is the European Health Information Initiative, which again is the umbrella for everything we do within e-health, including telehealth. But first of all, we look at telehealth as a discipline. Telepsychiatry, which would govern the type of solutions that Mastermind is coming in, is not for that. And then the figure on the right here, essentially, is one of the most exciting ones to me. You know, I get fairly excited over small things that people. But the one on the right basically says that between 2009 and 2015, telepsychiatry was actually the discipline that increased Legislation reimbursement, resources required, training required, privacy, security, everything that isn't about technology acquisition and maintenance. And you can perhaps do this as a kind of policy group, so if you were trying to have a campaign to adopt it and actually spread it, you'd actually put out the policy group and say, well, here we have some potential models of reimbursement that other networks are not doing. Some have suited some networks more than others, but at least we're providing a message for me that. Really, we need to all encourage companies to very proactively develop strategies to tell you Without strategic at the point within the ministry, the initiatives tend to die very, very quickly. So, we all have a role in actually promoting that particular area. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is and how well things accelerate when there is actually a benefit. Consider an increased multi channel approach to raising awareness of mastermind, explaining the different objectives. And this multimedia is important to get this message across. Look at developing an expansion strategy beyond the European Union, perhaps starting with the EU accession countries. So I just want to spend a little bit on this. Um, it's clear that with the stages that we've outlined in the project, that uh, the phase one that we're currently in now is essentially uh, aimed much more towards uh, those regions of countries where there has been demonstrated capacity in this stage, and I think that's an important point. Look at the sustainability of the deliverables before the end of the project. So again, having been involved in many EC projects, either directly or indirectly, they tend to do this, and then this. And once the project terminates, the delivery, everybody's happy to have the final meeting, and nothing And it's a bit of a regret, and the commission acknowledges that happens. But those projects which have been ultimately successful have had a succession strategy. And then actively increase the collaboration between international organizations, I've said that before, but just some, some uh, Potential partners, EC, who's sponsoring 50% of the project, the European Union e Health Network. Um, again, I'm, I'm not sure how much they're engaged, but they have the ear of all of the member states of the European 